Today we're talking about the Chevrolet Suburb. We'll drive through the history of this iconic car. And if you're looking to buy used, we'll see which years are good to consider and which ones you should avoid. So hop in and let's get going. Did you know that the longest running car nameplate in US history is the Chevrolet Suburban? It's also the world's first SUV. Believe it or not, this SUV also happens to be more powerful and more formidable than a police car. The Chevrolet Suburban was introduced in 1933. That's nearly 90 years ago. When it first debuted, it was a station wagon on a half ton truck frame. The first generation only ran for just two years. It wouldn't be until the sixth generation in the 1960s that the Suburban would evolve into the SUV we know today. The Suburban has consistently been one of General Motors' most successful vehicles. The latest models come with three engine options a 5.3 liter V8, 6.2 liter V8, and 3 liter inline 6 turbo diesel. By the way, don't think that the name Suburban has exclusively belonged to the Chevy brand. In fact, the name Suburban was actually a trademark owned by the Body and Forging Company in Indiana. They made wooden station wagon bodies for the chassis of various cars and light trucks for various car makers. At the time, American car companies like Dodge, Plymouth, Studebaker, and Nash used the Suburban designation to denote a windowed station wagon on a commercial frame. For example, the Dodge Town Wagon used this name until 1966, and the same thing for the Plymouth Fury Suburban Station Wagon until 1978. Eventually, these companies stopped producing these station wagons. This meant they stopped using the name Suburban. By then, GM was quick to jump on the opportunity to trademark the name. That was in 1988, when they started to use the name exclusively. Today, the Chevy Suburban is one of the largest SUVs on the market. It has outperformed and outlasted rival vehicles such as the Jeep Wagoneer and the Ford Excursion. Currently, its latest competitor in the full-size SUV segment is the expanded Ford Expedition EL, which replaced the Excursion. The modern Suburban has a full-frame pickup truck frame with three rows of seats and a V8 engine. The vehicle has the same height and weight as a Chevrolet Tahoe, although the Suburban is 20 inches longer, which means you get a full-size cargo space behind the nine-passenger cabin. In recent years, a Suburban has been used as a limousine, law enforcement vehicle, fire chief's vehicle, and ambulance. But it's probably best known for serving various federal agents. After all, it's the official vehicle of the FBI. Ever see a long line of black gothic style Suburbans driving down the road, whether live or on the news? Likely it was carrying top government officials or even the President of the United States. In such events, it's obvious those Suburbans belong to the Secret Service. The Secret Service operates fully armored versions of the Suburban for the presidential motorcade. Tradition for the presidential motorcade, the Secret Service uses several Suburbans. Some get set up as communication hubs and mobile command posts. Those SUVs are easily recognizable because they have the antenna platform and a large SATCOM dome containing its tracking antenna and other smaller antennas. All of this equipment enables it to act as a communication channel for the motorcade via a military satellite, conducting bi-directional transmission of voice data and video streaming. In addition, the mobile communications hub, equipment and passengers are all protected inside the fully armored Suburban. But that's not all. There are two other Chevrolet Suburbans that play an incredibly important role in ensuring the safety of the presidential motorcade. One usually rides in front of the presidential spare coach and the other behind the vice presidential vehicle. Remember President Biden's inauguration? The Secret Service also equipped those vehicles for electronic countermeasures. In other words, it could counter threats like improvised bombs, rocket-propelled grenades, and anti-tank guided missiles. The cars have collineal antennas on the roof and sensors which counter these threats and create barrage jamming signals. The antenna configuration can further be changed according to the level of threat. For example, taller antennas are used to change the jamming protection distance or frequency ranges. The other two domed radars are electronic warfare. EW sensor. These sensors detect the possible launch of rocket propelled grenades, RPG, or anti tank guided missiles, ATGM. When a system detects a launch, it likely triggers a string of infrared smoke grenades from the Suburban and the presidential limousine. This produces a visual smoke screen to interfere with infrared and radar guided attacks. This is just an assumption based on the fact that the presidential limousine is equipped with a driver's vision enhancement system. Basically, that assists the driver to drive an infrared smoke environment so he can quickly maneuver and escape. Obviously, most of this is just technical speculation since actual details aren't published. 
The vehicle has a lot of space to accommodate a wide variety of technical equipment without compromising the speed and power of the SUVs. The model used in the presidential motorcade is the Chevrolet Suburban 2500 HD. It has a reinforced undercarriage to support thousands of pounds of armor, communications equipment, protective systems, and other necessary electronics. So you can see why the Secret Service loves the Chevrolet Suburban. Needless to say, it can beat any police car like its little brother, the Chevrolet Tahoe, as well as the Ford Explorer and Ford Police Intercept. So if you want to feel tough like a Secret Service agent, then you could consider getting a black Chevrolet Suburban. Of course, it'll be much less modified than those actually used by the Secret Service. But the exterior will largely look the same. Did you know that since the 1950s, the Suburban has appeared in over 1,750 films and TV shows? In fact, it's made appearances in at least one television series every year since 1956. And so it received a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2019, being the first car ever to get one. But now let's talk about the 2021 Chevrolet Suburban. In total, 12 generations of Chevy Suburbans have been produced since its debut in the 1930s. The 2021 model is based on the same GMT T1XX platform as the Silverado 1500. This model replaced the truck's drive axle and leaf springs with independent multi-link rear suspension coil springs. This allowed Chevy to lower the vehicle floor, free up more space in the cargo area, and also for the second and third row seats. The 2021 model also features magnetic ride control and air ride adaptive suspension. This enables it to balance loads and adjust the ride height up to four inches. Let's say you find yourself driving through rough driving conditions. Well, the system will raise the car to provide more ground clearance or lower to improve aerodynamics and efficiency. Another nice feature of the new suspension is that when a car is parked, it can be lowered. This makes getting in and out of your Suburban even easier. The 2021 Suburban saw an increased length. This makes it the largest and longest SUV in the extended length segment. The 12th generation Suburban has better towing capability. We're talking an extra 100 pounds for the 5.3 liter V8 with four wheel drive and a 6.2 liter V8 with two wheel drive. In other words, 8,100 pounds and 8,200 pounds of maximum towing respectively. Fuel consumption is rated at 15 miles per gallon city and 20 miles per gallon highway. Rear seat entertainment will keep your passengers entertained with a pair of 12.6 inch HD LCD touchscreen, each capable of displaying its own content. And for the driver, there's a 10.2 inch Chevrolet infotainment three plus system with a 15-inch multicolor head-up display that can project step-by-step -step instructions, safety alerts, incoming calls, your speed, and more onto the windshield. Also, for the first time in history, the 2021 Suburban came with Amazon Alexa built-in. So you can stream your favorite music, add to your Amazon shopping list, and even connect to your smart home devices while you're on the go. Another interesting feature is the power sliding center console. The console can slide back 10 inches, giving you easy access to additional storage space between the seats. If you select valet mode, you can access a hidden drawer for secured storage, which is very practical. When the console is fully pushed back, passengers in the back can take advantage of the cup holders and other controls on the back of the console. Under the hood, the 2021 Suburban has a 3-liter Duramax turbo diesel that outputs 277 horsepower. It's coupled with a 10-speed automatic transmission. Also, we're talking about 460 pound-feet of torque on the low end, great for road trips or to help you pull a trailer. Fuel economy is relatively impressive at 21 miles per gallon city and 27 highway. Other engines offered are the 5 5.3 liter V8 Ecotech 3 with 355 horsepower and 385 pound feet of torque, and a 6.2 liter V8 Ecotech 3 with 420 horsepower and 460 pound feet of torque, both with the same 10 speed automatic transmission, and again rated for 15 miles per gallon city and 20 miles per gallon highway. Now, if you're looking to buy a used Suburban, here are some years to consider and some you might want to avoid. To begin with, we have the 2015 Chevrolet Suburban. This year in particular received the most complaints to date, including issues around various engine-related problems. Problems included sudden stalling of a running engine while driving, often resulting in accidents on the highway. Another common problem was related to the fuel system. Drivers complained that they were able to smell gasoline inside the cabin. Others complained that their Suburban had a hard time starting, which turned out to be due to the hose in the fuel line rubbing against each other and causing it to leak. It was also noted that the 2015 Suburban often suffers from problems with air conditioning. For example, even before hitting 60,000 miles, drivers had to deal with an air conditioner that suddenly stopped working. If it broke after 60,000 miles, it was no longer under warranty. And then you have to shell out 950 bucks to get it repaired. And even then, the issue wasn't always solved. Some Suburbans have been noted to have the air conditioning failed twice in a single year. This is due to problems related to the compressor, something which Chevy admitted but refused to take responsibility for. 
Another problem with this model was around the brakes. Some drivers found their brakes were incredibly stiff and difficult to use. Two other most troublesome years for the Chevy Suburban included the 07 and 09 models. The most frequently reported problem with those years was excessive engine oil consumption despite lack of external leaks. There were also complaints of valve tap breakage and engine failure while driving. For the excessive oil consumption issue, the typical repair cost was $5,000. And that was for an average mileage only 55,850 miles when the problem occurred. Of course, in the car industry, as with everything else, nothing is perfect. Other Suburban models had issues too, but not nearly as major as those years. So if I were looking for a used Suburban, I'd look at any other year than those three mentioned. But now, you tell me, what is your opinion about the Chevrolet Suburban? Do you have any funnier horror stories about it? Please comment below and share your experience and opinion. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for the support.